Right, so uh, in this section of the video, we want to be uh, trying to achieve more photorealistic uh, renders. So uh, the inspiration for this particular project is uh, this one here from Ian Moore Architects. A minimal bathroom, a lot of reflections, a light well at the back, um, some artificial lighting, and these are all Chroma fittings and finishes. So what we're gonna try and do is get to something close to this, uh, and I'll, I'll show you how to do the, the steps to do this. So uh, here we have our, our space, and uh, I wanna start adding um, some specialist lighting to uh, get this looking a bit more like the image online. So I'm going to uh, just hide my compass, don't need to be seeing that anymore. And I'm going to merge some light fittings that I've already done before. So if I go down to my um, import, merge, and uh, this is my lights that I've used before. I'm just gonna bring that in. And uh, I have a dome light and two V-ray lights. So uh, just so you can see what's uh, under the hood here, this is a dome light that's gonna give me a, uh, a more ambient type of um, uh, lighting. If I go to my materials, there's also an um, HDRI in here as well. Um, so if I just drop it into a slot here, and just drop it to another slot. This is like a, um, a, a high dynamic range image, and I think that will be fine, yeah. And uh, essentially it's a, um, image which has a multiplier on it to push ambient light to the space. So if I just go back to one, all it is is just a, a cloud, um, and you can you can swap this out for your own one if you want. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on the multiply. What this does is it just pushes ambient light to the space. So we go back to that image we're trying to achieve. This one doesn't have direct light. It's got more of a glow to it. Um, there's no direct sunlight coming into the space just the direct light is from the IES data from the artificial light things. So what I'm trying to do is just achieve that with a dome light, not so much the daylight. So this is just um, when you want to create one of these, you can just go to uh, V-Ray and uh, you can choose, let's go back here, um, you can just choose a V-Ray light and then turn the type to dome. So we go uh, V-Ray light, and by default that one's set dome. And there's all these other ones you can choose from. So that's all that is. Uh, the next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna um, just uh, turn my sun off and just work with that dome light. And the last couple of things I wanna do here is I've created a, what's called a portal light to push light into the space. So again, I've just gone to uh, V-Ray lights and you can choose a V-Ray light and um, just make it a, a plane. And uh, if you look at the properties of this one here, it is a um, portal. So when we look at the uh, information uh, as part of this light here, um, where are we in the options, here we go. In the options, I've just chosen skylight portal. So that's pushing light to the space. Um, if I just used a standard one, it would uh, you get more of the controls here. So I'm just gonna go skylight portal for that one. And then finally for my um, light shelf, I'm just using another light here. This one isn't the skylight portal. It's a one that casts shadows. And uh, I haven't done too much to the settings of this. I've given it a, a multiplier of 30 and um, you can show the temperature here, temperature being uh, 5,000 Kelvins. If you want it to be a little bit less, you can make it make it 4,200. And you can see the colors just change. Again, if I crank that up to 7,000, that will go a little more blue. Um, if you keep it at four, 2000, which is like a Kelvin um, temperature. Um, this is more of a warm feel. The stronger you make it, the colder it feels. So, and if you want to know more on that, um, check out a lighting suppliers website. They can explain more on uh, the Kelvins. Okay, so we go back to our view here. And um, uh, I'm gonna go Alt W to bring that full screen. Uh, my last tutorial, that shower was the wrong color. So I'm just gonna duplicate uh, that material into here and I'm gonna call it shower. And I uh, just change those IDs. So just make that one one and that one two. And then um, make the uh, actual material here not porcelain. I'm gonna make it uh, stainless steel. 
and then apply that and then just turn off the uh, wireframe component and you can see that's now um, putting the orange material in the right place and the stainless steel material in the right place. Okay, so with that, uh, I'm just going to uh, hit render. And again, um, my render setup here is using some of the default uh, ones that ship with V-Ray. And I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll go and do some other settings on this in a second. I'm just gonna do this because this is very quick. Hit render. And now we're starting to get that warm glow from the V-Ray light and the light shelf. Uh, we're kind of getting a bit of a direct light here and we are getting um, a bit more light pushed into, into the space. So previously it was a little bit dark, a little bit different. Um, this one is now pushing that light into the space in the same way as what we'd see in, in that image here. Uh, again, we'll be doing post-production or all the rest to, to make this all look right, but you can see here the light fitting is um, a warm yellowish color and we're trying to do this inside of Max, a warm yellowish color. Because I like to use light shelves, you're not actually seeing that light fitting. If I did rotate the light fitting and put it in there, you'd actually see it like in this image. Um, and you'd actually see like the, uh, the light. You can actually turn that on inside of the V-Ray lighting um, dialog here and you can make it visible. So that's if you want to do that in particular detail. So here's um, our rendering, starting a little bit better with the uh, illumination. And uh, you can play around with this um, with different types of settings, like if I go and turn um, this off, maybe it's a bit too much, and I just want to work with two lights. And when I go to my rendering uh, windows, a good way to, to test this, this is kind of like fine tuning. Um, I'm going to clone that render window here and just see the difference when I turn that, that um, uh, global illumination off. So what you'll see here now is not so much a let's pull it down a little bit, not so much a direct light coming in, but more of a, a glow. And the less light you have, the faster it's going to be. So I might actually just even leave that dome off because I'm getting quite a nice um, ambient glow here. I'm getting my IES light, and uh, maybe I could uh, crank up the. Um, uh, camera settings to let more light, etc. But let's just uh, work with that for now. Okay, so a um, couple of things. Um, so even if we don't want to use a, uh, a dome light here at the moment, if I go to my um, number eight, and you can see here it's using a V-Ray sky. Uh, I could even, uh, instead of using that dome lighting, I could bring across that sky from here and just place it in the background. That's another, another workaround. Um, we're pulling on the um, exposure from the physical camera, so we'll leave that as, as is now. Uh, one thing to note inside of that camera is there is a, um, a white balance. So you saw with our, our last render, um, looks a little bit colder compared to the previous one. Um, you could go and adjust some of this, um, so sunlight, daylight, and it will change the uh, color of those those Kelvins here. So we go overcast, you can see it's going to change. Um, and we go to uh, I don't know, halogen cool, and might change as well. So all these different things can be um, adjusted to get it exactly correct. Um, and I might even um, drop down my exposure value to lend a bit more light. Now, uh, that's in essence uh, lighting. In the next tutorial, I want to uh, fine tune a few things, bring in some people, some render people for context, and then start to adjust some of my render settings to get some much sharper results.